We've done a review on one of the most common but legendary Mercs of all time, the W123 E-Class. Now they've made around 2.7 million units of this car, but what we're taking a look at today is something slightly older and a little bit more rare with only 1.9 million units sold worldwide. Here we have the 1970 Mercedes-Benz 250. This is the W114 body. Today I'm gonna to show you around this car and I'm also gonna give it a test drive, so stay tuned. Now, short history regarding the 114. Now, this is usually called the Stroke 8. That's because they have this ID plate thing with a slash 8 on it, denoting the year of release of this car, which is 1968. Now, usually when you research this car as well, it shows up as a 114 or a 115. Now, what's the difference? The 114 models were these inline six units. If you get the four cylinder versions or the diesels, they're called the 115. Now, over here, we have the 114. Anyway, here at the front from the exterior, first thing you'll notice here at the front is that Paul Brock's beautiful, magnificent design really does show with this one. Where is so? First, your vertical headlamps. You have this hood that tapers off just below this part of the car. Since this is a pre-facelift model, you have a grille that is a little bit taller, but a little narrower, I would say. Then, of course, more of that Paul Brock design just below your Mercedes badge. You have this ridged uh, pedestal thing that you can see even in the W100 Mercedes-Benz 600. Now, coming over here to the side of the car, what you'll notice here is that this thing, it's still quite similar to a W123. However, you have this really long chrome line that runs all across the car. And the main difference between this and the 123 is that this was from the time when Mercedes still didn't let you have a door handle you can pull on. Instead, you still press this button right here to open the door. Now, let's just check the door thud from here. It sounds really solid, almost close to a 123, but I think I still do prefer the 123. Now, this car, it's all just boxy all over. You do get a repeater for turn signals here by the fender. You get slightly round fenders on this one, more so of that Paul Brock design. Then you also get 14 inch rims. Since this is a Japanese version of the 114, you have a fender mounted mirror, which looks really nice on this one. You also get these wipers that move towards the side very different from Mercedes of today. More of Paul Brock's design language shows here at the back. So first your trunk, it is quite long. It's a little bit more tapered than a one, two, three. You have this nice little chrome handle piece slash trim right here. You have an entire chrome piece running all across, some rounded tail lights, you get the 250 badge. Now there's a blank badge over here. This is supposedly for where you're gonna say automatic on it. Now down here you can see you have more chrome all across this bumper and of course the fuel, fillers over here it's pretty cool now as you open this trunk one you just press this button right here you lift it up and as you can see it's a lot bigger than a w123 because of the suspension setup i believe of this car it's a lot simpler it's a lot deeper too a 123 usually just around ends over here but this one goes all the way in it is really pretty cool now opening up the hood of this car you do have to release it from the inside first then the release handle for the hood itself is over here and as you lift this one up, what you have here is a 2.5 liter twin carb inline six M114 engine. This makes 130 horsepower and 199 newton meters of torque. Now this engine, although the power figures aren't too bad, fortunately it is mated to a four speed column shift automatic. So yes, it is a bit of a slouch. Here's side the 114, door thud check. Sounds not bad, now we'll start the car up. You kind of do have to help this car start because it is an old carb. And there you go, fires right up like that. All right, now here inside the interior, it's a lot simpler than let's say a W123. It's more reminiscent of something like a 108 or a 109. Your dashboard, it is covered in nice leather. You get so much wood on this all over. You get really nice air vents as well. And although they are a bit brittle today, I'm sure that by the time they made this, those felt incredibly good. Your steering wheel, very similar to a 108 as well. You have the horn metal ring all across the center, the Mercedes logo. You have your four speed column shifter knob over here. Okay, there we go. Then your instrument cluster. It's also very basic, very retro looking, and there's really not much on it. Now, what's cool about all of these though is that you have an entire giant center console to the middle with pretty much nothing but a radio and an ashtray. To the middle of everything, you have a place to put some items, you get your power window switches, but aside from your power window switches, you also have this 
rotary knob that opens this uh, small window right here to the side. The seats themselves are covered in like partly leather and partly cloth, although it is kind of uh, not in the best shape. It's still not bad. It is also very springy. Now here at the back of the 114 door thread check. Sounds pretty good too. Now back here, the first thing you'll notice here is just how much you see out of it. You can see so much ahead of you to your side as well. Your visibility as the passenger is just absolutely the best in any car that I've ever tried. These front seats, they look quite low. They're also very wide looking from the back. Your legroom is really good too for a car like this for its size. Headroom is also excellent. What's kind of odd with this car though is that the headrest is so far back that you kind of have to lean a lot just for your heads to touch it. Now, if you want to sit here in the middle to see three people, you can easily do that. The seat, they do kind of sink in, so your headroom is still great. And the car feels nice and wide, and the door cars are rather thin. So th seating three people back here anytime, no problem. So driving the 1970 Mercedes-Benz 250 W114. Now getting into this car coming from like a one, two, three, honestly, it's not that big of a difference. I think the main difference between this car and that is the fact that it's just slightly less refined. The steering wheel definitely feels older because it is a lot thinner as well. It just has a really uh, slightly older vibe to it. Now the accelerator in this car as well, it is quite weird. I'm not sure if it has to do with the fact that it's a carb engine, but you really do have to like step on it a little bit. It's a lot tighter as well. If you don't step on it, it just, it just doesn't go this thing. Now when it comes to the power of this car, don't expect much. It has 130 horsepower. The transmission is not really doing a great job of selecting the right gear. So right now I'm revving pretty high, but I also don't know what the revs I'm doing. It's just really the sound. I don't have a tachometer on this either, so. Yeah, you just kind of cruise along in this car. Not particularly refined, but it's a, not a horrible car to drive. Now we're just gonna try to accelerate this car a little bit. You hear so much of the engine, the transmission just shifted. Yeah, it's, it's more or less similar to a 1, 2, 3. It's just really that carb feel that detracts a little bit from the experience. If there's one thing I really love about these old cars is that everything, the panels on it, the pillars, they're all really thin. So visibility in this car is really great. If you think that a 1, 2, 3 has great visibility already as it is, this thing is even a lot better. Plus the fact that you have these quarter windows that you can open just in case you don't want to open your AC since those really take a, a big toll on your engine. You can just open those and enjoy some fresh, nice fresh air in this car. Suspension in this, it is actually quite similar to a 1, 2, 3. Now I wouldn't say that it's better or worse than a 1, 2, 3. It really is about the same. It's really soft. It's just quite comfortable. There's absolutely no sense of handling in this car. It is also a very big bar, just like a 1, 2, 3. However, the main difference is I find that the seats in this car, they are a lot softer even than a 1, 2, 3. So that really does add a lot to the comfort in terms of softness. However, what this car lacks is a little bit more support. So if you're going in longer journeys, I think your back will be a little bit happier with a 123 or a 124. NVH is pretty much non-existent in this car, at least the suppression of NVH. So you just hear everything. The engine is really loud. The exhaust in this one, I think there's an issue as well. It is also really loud. It's just not a pretty good, uh, long distance cruiser if you want to keep your sanity. Now another thing that's quite different in this car from modern cars but also very similar to the W123 is that this thing still has a recirculating ball steering wheel so there's really no feel to this car. It's like zero feel. There's a big dead spot to it. It is not precise in any way. It's just a big, well, recirculating ball in front of you that you can turn. Overall, if you're looking for a classic car, this car over here is not a bad proposition. Sure, you can always get a slightly newer W123, but as it is for a collector's item, this car over here is not bad.